one. Welcome to the Skein Vein podcast. This is uh, a discussion I'm going to have with Dominic, uh, which went very badly the first time because I went off topic, but that's sort of germane to the point, which is this podcast is going to be about let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. It's going to be about sex. And uh, I'm going to try to make it sort of reverse Freudian. And Freud, Freud, I felt, used development to make everything weird. And I'm going to try to use weird to make everything development. So, uh, so, so sex, you can't really talk too much about it, I feel, without talking about the the what it means to you because i feel like you know if you try to explain sex to someone by just like showing them the bhagavad gita or sorry i mean the uh, kama sutra (laughs) yeah that'd be really awkward (laughs) if you try that then um you you lose out on some of the context which it um in the first place, it, it has this sort of thing similar to like social behavior, but I feel like uh, in terms of roles and, and in terms of uh, uh, re- reciprocity, it, it's different because uh, there's a lot of like games people play. And then there's many people who also say, oh, I'm tired of playing games, but, you know, they forget that you're never not playing games. You're just playing a more sort of boring game because there's always some sort of back and forth, some sort of agreement, some sort of normality. And that has to do with sort of self-perception. Self-perception, I guess you could say is, uh, like Dominic has said to me many times, what movie are you in, right? Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I want to know what movie I'm in to know what kind of actor I should be. And there was a, a Joel Haver video where he did a what if in those Freaky Friday uh, movies, they just like realized uh, the lesson very quickly. So personality has this aspect to it where uh you don't have that so you don't learn the lesson very quickly but instead you know there can be actually quite uh uh, uh quite a lot of conflict quite a lot of cognitive dissonance where uh whereas someone might think that between people there's going to be more disagreement and in one person there's going to be more agreement more consonants it could actually be the opposite and this itself is a way where i think we sort of you were listening to something about hamlet weren't you yeah i'm listening to harold bloom shakespeare dimension of the human i read that book a few i read that book uh like a decade ago like it was a long time ago it's interesting, like he said, uh, Hamlet is becoming more relatable to like African and Asian yeah. people. Yeah, like Code Geass, like Lelouch is slightly based off of Hamlet. He's influenced by Hamlet. Mm, makes sense. Yeah, because dead parent. But... Yeah, so like, it's it, it, but at the same time, it's interesting how we sort of divide the collectivist individualist thing like this, because I I think you can see with that, uh, that uh, conversion therapy video I shared you on, and we should probably like put these videos in the description, but how anime often has these, uh, anime and collective trauma, the video was called, anime often has these plots that um reify and sort of make a emotion real and the consequences of it like 
the Persona series, for instance, uh, there will be disturbances caused by someone's uh, conflicted psyche, and it can cause them to be like, uh, you know, possessed and uh, like to disappear. And a similar thing, I think, also happens in Persona 5, where there's more and more people just becoming basically like hikikomoris. Uh, Dylan would have to confirm this to me because I don't really know much about um, like Persona. I might be mixing that up with another series, but we see we see this dynamic where um, we assume that where the person disagrees with himself but agrees with others that's collectivism but i think you can see that that's as much hamlet too so it really depends on the frame you have because hamlet in his story has a bunch of self-doubt but he's also you know you could say from a confucian perspective he has this familial duty or whatever so it's really the sort of Shakespearean myth that like this character, this self-perception is the most important. I guess it depends on where in the cycle you are and whether you view it as a positive or a negative thing. Like uh, Fight Club, Joker, all these like loner fictions, Napoleon fictions, you can view the character as like a good person or a bad person. And what they do for society, like Mark Zuckerberg and uh, uh, Bill Jobs and Steve Gates, what they did for society, uh, you can say it is good or bad, but then whether they take credit for it is also important. Uh, the uh, individual drives of these people. In Crime and Punishment, he says, uh, he, he Raskolnikov, is constantly saying, am I a weak man or am I Napoleon? And uh, the, so this kind of loops back into psychosexual beliefs and becomes a sort of thing about, uh, you know, how we uh, sort of schedule these uh tensions and releases that really you know are mirrored in society itself you know depressions and stuff like that and this uh lends to this psychoanalytic young yin as above so below sort of belief with all these hermeneutic or hermetic trappings where you, you believe in a sort of magic way that uh, you can dictate value by, you know, uh, the diversity of opinions, sort of human beings having control over their environment, which is, at the end of the day, it and both its opposite, a subject of a lot of... Uh, sort of talk about sex are we in control of our sexual impulses or not it's all about comfort control things that you can view positively or negatively and that goes into sort of should i be me or should i be someone else and evangelion sort of goes into this um Dominic, you haven't seen Evangelion yet, and therefore, I don't think I can be your friend. I watched it in due time. It's on Netflix now. But, so, Ava has a lot of psychosexual trappings. And you said in the first video, you thought, you thought this could have just be like my video. And I'm trying to get responses from you, you piece of shit. Um, oh, that's because you're I don't because you didn't pause. I thought, you know, like you're still going. So I'm just like, I'm just listening to you because I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the points you're trying to make. I'm not good at like asking follow-up questions. Like all I can think of is like, what do you think? 
but I, I, I could also say, how does this reflect? Oh, how was your sex life? To quote <laughs> the movie, uh, uh, the 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 room. <laughs> I mean, I guess from what I gather as far as the topic or what you're going on about is, you have self perception, and then you have like your how this ties into your relation to sex, but the sex is itself sort of like a subset of your overall self as an activity, your overall, uh, the different things you participate in. And in that regard, uh, it's just, it's like, I do think we can align with our impulses. We can, like Nietzsche and his, uh, I think it's, was it, is it Daybreak? I don't remember. I don't remember, but in one of Nietzsche's works, he talked about different ways to like work on, like to manage drives, like, because Nietzsche had this thing of like, you get drives, you have different drives and they push themselves into your consciousness and then they express themselves and you can like manage them through different means, whether it's by letting them be expressed or supplementing them or things like that. Like Frodo is very much influenced by Nietzsche. So I feel uh, like that itself, um, Plato said the unobserved life is not worth living. Yeah, right? uh, Socrates, don't examine life. Oh, no, Plato. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah. It's I want to be wrong. Yeah, it is Plato. Because that makes it funnier. But then, then I think about these philosophers. There's the sort of this hegemonic sort of uh, individualist state that Western philosophy sort of comes in where you have these figureheads, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle. But it's kind of funny because it, if you think of it as just a different way of like record keeping, then uh, a lot of people say like, uh, I forget which one of them, but that they were just uh, a bunch of different authors under the same name for instance, that's a theory some people have. That's just a theory for when it comes which to- is, Which is much like uh, what Confucius did, which he was less a, a writer and more of a curator of already existing ideas, yeah. which, I mean, this, this makes one think, how much is any idea original? Uh, and you might think maybe the originality comes with the continuity that it comes in and that's the continuity that we have in our lives as we go through them meet different people and sort of uh as as uh, freud would say come out of the nest but then the whole framing of uh, beginning middle end and the whole sort of way we treat thought and accomplishment and all this stuff you could say in a Judith Butler sort of way is very like man focused. It's very like we speak and all that comes out as penises, right? We speak and everything is represented by penises. And you could say even the Big Bang, that's quite Freudian. Uh... <laughs> 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 You can almost think of it, yeah, it's pretty Freudian. I almost made me, it made me think of the cosmic egg. The singularity is like the egg, like the ovary. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Uh, men are terrible. Mm. Mm. So uh, this, this is kind of this collaborative framework, which Judith Butler sort of poses at language as this sort of postmodern thing that constructs our reality and that, you know, we went around the bend, but we can't look back as a uh, Philip K. Dick said in that movie directed by Thomas W. Anderson. What do you think of Scientology, by the way? I don't care for it. I feel the same way I feel about Mormonism, where it's just like, you know, well-meaning people who are a part of it, but I wish it didn't exist because it's just, it doesn't even, I feel like it doesn't even serve people the, in the best way that it possibly could. Because I feel like 
you can make something up, right? It's not true, but it could actually be very useful and it wouldn't like cause you much psychological anguish and it wouldn't mislead and derail you that much. If anything, you could have like functional fictions or something that could like, that could help you furthermore interpret things or understand things better and have a more stability to act from. So you could do that, but a lot of these recent religions that are just outright made up or outright cults, they just, it's a social dynamic dimension. I mean, I think it's more exploitative and more. I think we can look at cults and ideas and things that have been popularized and deride them because they're sort of unthinking or that at least we can't uh, identify a mind as thinking these, right? But that itself sort of, you know, there's a cycle that's happening there, but it's nonlinear um, where something, because of different influences, right? So you have, you kill all the wolves and then the deer eat all the grass and there's too many deer and they're fucking in the middle of the street. Then you reintroduce the wolves and a few years later, the course of the river has changed. So all these things interact with each other, but we feel mostly the same, but we don't give credit for how these sort of uh, bodies without organs, these nonlinear events sort of change us because we are sort of inside that. Um, that cycle being changed throughout it, but also staying somewhat the same. And we're, we're, we're inspired by others, but then we try to say that more specifically, like who specifically am I inspired by? Or like we try to make a sort of a definite other we try to make a definite other that um, represents us better or represents it better, but we also identify with that definite other, you know, like how on Fox News or like the working man or something like that, you know, the silent majority. Yeah, um, yeah I get that. It's, I think it has to, it reminds me of a, uh, when you said like a mime, like if you are in, in a transparent box or something and you were feeling around and a mime saw you and they thought you were miming, mm. like this sort of like- uh, un- There's an imitative nature to all learning, yeah. And to all expressing. Yeah. So any individuality, you just cribbed it from some other guy, you're biting flow. Pretty much. And I can see all my influences. Like I can look back and like think of every single influence I have. I can practically trace back if I was paying attention, if I wanted to, almost every single idea I've ever had. Of course, there's some I've had on my own, like insights I've come to on my own. But that's like that's at most, at most, it's like 20%, 20% me, 80% other people. But but it's interesting because I I, I get that like trying to focus on ideas and feelings that are in your own, because then with others. Uh, emotions sort of they become something different they're not like an expression of yourself they're like a compromise right or they're part of a more synergistic whole and then we kind of become lost in that and we have debates over like who am i am i a part of a good thing or a bad thing And, and that itself is a sort of interesting debate we can have about like ethics and whether uh, it's better to go against the herd or to sort of go with the herd. Because on on the one hand, you have uh, this sort of behavior that is disruptive, going against the herd. Going with the herd, however, you could also do bad. But at the same time, we can justify 
uh, you know, atomized behavior and preferences and just specializing everything for everyone. But then we have optimized nothing for anyone if we specialize everything for everyone because you can't specialize everything you have to like get with a program you can't just like you know all like go and do whatever you want and shit because that's not how like organization works you have to be a bit selfless which is what like my grandma in pittsburgh for instance has said about like the current generation and I think I think uh, it could be true, like the current generation is selfish, but it's also in terms of, you know, collectivism, there's different ways of expressing, uh, you know, communication with others. You do it naturally when you're around others. Like if you walk by a homeless person and don't look at them, just like avoid looking at them. That's a way of communicating with another. And so then we see how this is, you know, another way of saying uh, there are philosophies where you can adopt it individually and it may or may not work. But then game theoretically, there's uh, philosophies that they depend on the sort of harmony of a bunch of different things. And I think that's interesting in and of itself because that's the reason why philosophy that you read in books is never complete because you have your own thoughts, other people have their own thoughts and our, our, our lives are very complex with just, you know, like wherever we look, there's kind of, and whatever we do or do, don't do, there's a question about like the nature or uh, the promptness and the immediacy and uh, wise dumb of our action, the wise dumb. Um, so then that leads us into our next two topics, what you do and what you can do. So yeah, I'll let you actually introduce this. What do you mean? What do you do and what do you can do? Like in your life or something? Yeah. What do you think you do? I mean, I feel like for some people, people feel like, I guess sometimes people make it seem as if you mainly establish goals, but I see it more as like you prioritize and you sort of like you lag and you relax mm -hmm. into things. And you sort of like fall into grooves and into habits. You also get drawn, huh? Rhythms, yeah. Yeah, you get there's drawn. also like breaks. There's yeah. one song to another song. Yeah. And there's dissonance and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like you have all you have all these different things. I mean, you're living basically you're living a symphony. So but then I'd I'd say there's also ambience too. Like yeah. uh not not everything is like art that's sort of a pretentious way of looking at the world like oh it's all beautiful and stuff no it's not no it's not i mean there's there's lots of happenstance there's lots of fuzz there's lots of waste there's lots of emptiness there's lots of you know like just things like things uh connecting when they shouldn't like when you're walking your shirt gets caught on the door handle and you fall or something or like when you bump into things, like like things connecting when they shouldn't. So there's lots of things disconnecting when you don't want it to, like things falling apart, like your pants falling down when you're walking or something. You know, just so it's just like you have to take into account all the different things that happen. And that's what makes you, that's what allows you to render the true state of affairs. And I feel like people leave out a bunch of details and leave out a bunch of patterns in their day-to-day -day life that they actually pick up continuously because they don't find it relevant. They don't find it interesting. They don't find it. They don't prioritize it. They don't see any use for it. They just kind of like, it's kind of like I was talking to my friend about how like when people suffer, don't get about how they're suffering. They don't look at the mechanics of suffering. Like they just kind of like ask maybe why or something. Why did this happen to happen to me? And it's like, how is this happening to you? What exactly is happening to you? And if mm. you can like learn it, you're, you can actually get a better leverage into 
addressing it or reconciling yourself to the situation. Yeah, like how you deal with, uh, what is that quote? Like uh, a lot of your personality depends on how you deal with adversity or some fucking shit. Yeah. Where like you can, you can sort of like have an injury and sort of like whine about it or you can like have an injury and just like keep quiet about it and then you know it gets worse and worse over time and you die of like gangrene because you were trying to be manly because you're a fucking retard and you don't feel like crying like a little baby like it hurts right (laughs) so that's a cry like that (laughs) as a subversion you know how you deal with adversity sometimes uh sometimes i can't really say anything because i don't want to say anything i'm i'm i don't want to say the wrong thing and that's how i deal with adversity (laughs) i mean as far as like what you can do like like yeah i mean that's pretty much that's pretty much what you can do like there's just but before you can do anything, you have to like assess the situation. You have to be able to interpret it. Interpretation, like a company's action, like, and it modifies. It's kind of like how perception and locomotion are intricately tied. Why you move to see and you see to move. So there's that feature there to things. Yeah, it's like it's like the compulsion aspect to it. Or or I've also said a impulse. I don't know what compulsion and impulse are different for what reason probably different areas they happen in uh but impulse and inhibition that's a big thing with sex it's either you you have you have it phobic or counterphobic or you have uh oh the classic i'm very comfortable with my sexuality um where So in in the whole scheme of what you do, then uh, the cycles you go through are like algorithms, like this, that, this, that, the other thing. And sometimes it, oftentimes it's more subconscious. Like, uh, you know, once you ride a bike, you never forget. So it's not thinking about it being in a flow that really helps. And so some people have to sort of get over their sort of inhibitions and get over their impulses. Then, you know, they have to turn off the inhibitions, then turn them on again, but not in such a way that is annoying, basically. Um, Of course, impulse to a certain level can be good, but then impulse can also carry you away. Like I was trying to sign for, sign up for uh, SDV, you know, college skills. And I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. So I set up a timer, right? And then I was thinking, oh, I wanna play, uh, I forget what album, like World of Echo by uh, uh, Arthur Russell and it's a really good album, very haunting, very uh, uh, kind of uh, pretty in a way too. It's what I'd imagine like a fetus in the womb would make if they made an album. But anyway, so I signed up for SDV kind of, and I noticed in my head, I can think of the number of steps it takes to do it, but then I quickly get to like, you know, there's an impatience because there's a lot of accidentals with like scanning the screen, trying to find the correct links, which I imagine is like a lot of IT. And so that what you do over time informs what you can do. And so that becomes a non-cycle because then you get engaged in newer cycles of more competent behavior but this also in terms of the economy 
uh, I was watching this video on the eight hour work week, which said the hard work, because we've moved away from goods producing societies, hard work is in much lesser quantities. When you get to the sort of service industry, which in contrast to build, get and make is like uh, help, you know, when you education, healthcare, knowing professional and business services, uh, moving, the uh, trucking and stuff like that, uh, ruling with government, selling in these franchises, uh, showing with media, soothing with uh, hotels and stuff, and trust with finance. We have this sort of idea that more is better when like, do we really think more is better? Really? Like over speculation and finance, that's overwork and over commoditization. Uh, and hotels, I, I don't really have any evidence for that. Spas are good. I think you should be able to go to a spa for like six years straight, probably. Um, media, there's definitely media saturation. There's uh, in selling, you have 24 hour locations and you can have a certain amount of uh, overt pandering to consumers that you wouldn't have in like, say, Europe. Um, government, that itself, you know, people talk about is the government too big or whatever and what what should they make laws on and I guess in terms of, uh, I won't go into that, uh, professional and business services. So me, I, I've coded a bit and I can tell you like when you go above three hours, then you're suddenly like, ugh, you know, fuck it. And this is why, this is part of why, you know, uh, Microsoft pays people to just like relax because one is probably, you know, they don't want you to like be their competitor but two is also because they know that you just working uh 80 hours straight that's not actually going to be productive uh and then education and healthcare the sort of quantity over quality of course we have a lack of healthcare but a lot of it i guess you could say rather than working harder if we just put our attention to things better and stuff like that. And this is uh, the problem with, you know, a can do attitude because it, it really, you, you shouldn't see quality as just quantity. Um, and that's kind of where minimalists go, but I think minimalists are clowns uh, themselves because they have a very like, they just react to like consumerism. What do you think? Uh, well, we have four minutes, but I don't really know much about minimalist, but I do, I do find myself to be inclined towards a sort of minimalism. And, but it's not due to my orientation towards consumerism. It's just to streamline my own life. It's for the sake of function. Yeah. So I can see how some people may want it that way. Or you just don't want to have too many things to manage or to take care of. is definitely important. I think a lot of stuff in America is like big and yeah. they really like managerize it. Yeah. But, you know. So then the next section is uh, what people think you do. And then we can also cover uh, how we think of what we do or could do or what others think we do or could do. So we could just kind of sum this up as thinking the whole thinking thinking of thinking thinking of others thinking what others think of us right yeah. and sort of it, it, it's quite obvious how this kind of uh intersects with sex intersects with sex ha 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 um because there's a lot of like sort of concern about like pleasure but then you could say on the same vein skein that you know, we sort of see it as, you know, men 
gain pleasure in this sort of way, women gain pleasure in this sort of way. And to a certain extent, you could say that's like anatomical or whatever. Yeah. But then uh, a lot of it- Psychological. A lot of it could also be to an extent what you see your role as, you know, oh, I'm a big dominant man. You're a small submissive woman. Um, so the the sort of thought I think is where um, a lot of people occupy their minds, right? Like how is the experience for other people? Um, and this this didn't end up being about sex, but as uh, the House of Cards character, Frank Underwood said, I fuck boys. <laughs> yeah. so, but but the cycles gone through there are kind of what are the cycles of thought this is a cycle of thought you know a cycle of thought is something determined by thought to be a cycle of thought um the goods and services made by this thinking about thinking it's sort of marketing and all this other stuff youtube media uh, coding algorithms they control thought but also thought controls them and uh, the the concept of control as i was saying is you know biased towards this concept of you conceiving of it rather than others conceiving of it like um algorithms are sort of the fences of uh the web so then to sum it all up, uh, it, it, these perceptions, these thoughts, what you do, right? What's the whole like emotional throughput? And, and the throughput is, is, is the doodly daddly Harry trying to end the video, but then he glitches into a, a, a the Simpsons character, diddly, diddly, diddly. Um, he had a dead wife, actually. That could be relevant to the one video. More, one more minute. But so, uh, to sum up, perception, action, and uh, thinking. Uh, sex, baby. <laughs> All right, that's all, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>